Never worry about passing another nursing school exam ever again. Head over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube to join for free. Today, we're diving into the world of congestive heart failure. So for heart failure, simply think HF for heart failure as HF, heavy fluid inside the body. This is a chronic progressive condition that affects millions of Americans. Congestive heart failure, or CHF, is characterized by the heart's inability to adequately pump blood through the body. In essence, the heart fails as a pump in heart failure, leading to a range of symptoms and complications as all this blood backs up into the body. So before we get started, you can head to the link in the description below to access this blog for more information and free practice questions to test your knowledge. Okay, now there are two main types of congestive heart failure. We have right side of heart failure and left side of heart failure. So with right side of heart failure, simply think it rocks the body with fluid. This type involves reduced force or strength of contraction of the right ventricle, which results in decreased blood flow to the lungs for oxygenation. So again, the memory trick is right side of heart failure rocks the body with fluid. As this right ventricle fails, fluid now fills up the body, resulting in weight gain, jugular vein distension, and basically a fluid-filled body. Now left side of heart failure, think L for left-sided as L for lungs we have fluid backing up into the lungs. In this case, the left ventricle struggles to pump blood effectively through the rest of the body. Now, regardless of the type, congestive heart failure ultimately leads to decreased cardiac output. Fancy words for decreased blood being pumped out of the heart with cardiac output, which is defined as either decreased force of contraction by the ventricles or reduced volume of blood being pumped. Now, let's take a deeper look at heart failure pathophysiology. When cardiac output decreases, the body responds in several ways. First, the kidneys activate the RAS system, the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, which kind of act as a lock on the kidneys to retain more fluid in the body rather than the potty and constricting the blood vessels. The sympathetic nervous system is also stimulated, which increases the heart rate and constricts the blood vessels even further. So as heart failure progresses, these mechanisms can lead to increased blood pressure, fluid retention, and even edema, that waterbed skin. So what are the consequences and complications of heart failure? Well, the most significant consequence of congestive heart failure stems from the heart's increased workload to supply the body with oxygenated blood. This increased demand can lead to damage to the heart muscles as well as abnormalities in the heart structure, such as scarring of the conduction pathways leading to AFib, that atrial fibrillation, and even left ventricular hypertrophy basically an enlarged, rounded left ventricle. These structural changes can further exacerbate, or basically worsen, the heart's inefficiency, creating a vicious cycle. As nursing students, it's crucial to understand the signs and symptoms of congestive heart failure, which may include shortness of breath, fatigue, edema, that waterbed skin, and even irregular heart rhythms. Now let's talk about monitoring and management strategies of heart failure. First, assessing vital signs is essential, especially the heart rate, blood pressure, and oxygen saturation. Next is monitoring daily weights and fluid intake and output. Remember, weight gain typically means water gain. So if clients are gaining weight very quickly, they're basically retaining more fluid inside the body, leading to further heavy fluid with heart failure. We should also encourage adherence to prescribed medications, such as diuretics that diurese and drain fluid from the body and into the body. ACE inhibitors that end in pril, like lisinopril, that lower the blood pressure, and even beta blockers that block beats in the heart. We can also provide patient education on lifestyle modifications, including dietary restrictions, exercise recommendations, and stopping smoking. And lastly, is recognizing and responding promptly to signs of decompensating, or basically worsening symptoms. With all that being said, congestive heart failure is a complex condition that requires careful monitoring and management. As a future nurse, it's essential to understand the pathophysiology, the complications, and nursing considerations related to this chronic condition. By staying informed and providing comprehensive care, we can significantly improve the quality of life for patients living with congestive heart failure. Remember, early intervention and patient education are key to slowing the progression of this condition and preventing further complications. Well, that's it for today's video on heart failure. Stay tuned for more informative videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for regular updates on nursing topics. And for the practice questions you see here, click the link in the description below. Looking to cut your study time in half? Head on over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube. You can sign up for free and get access to all of this.